Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to worship here at Mount Chestnut Presbyterian Church. We're glad to have all of you with us this morning, whether you're worshiping with us here in the sanctuary or via Facebook Live or via the radio station. We're just glad to have you worshiping us uh, with us this morning uh, on this really beautiful day. Um, so uh, do we have any announcements this morning? Okay, I do have some joys and concerns. We'll move into those. Uh, first of all, I want to share a joy. Um, Levi Evans was announced as drum major for the uh, marching band, so that's exciting. We're, we're very glad about that. Congratulations. Um, a couple of concerns that we have. Um, we want to keep in, re in remembrance uh, several families of the congregation um, who have had loved ones pass away recently. Um, and just want to remind everyone that the uh, service for Don Negi will be Tuesday uh, at 4.30 here at the church. Um, also, uh, I want to let you know that Randy Hoover, who is um, Marty Hoover's brother, passed away this week. Um, so please add the Hoover family uh, to your prayers during their time of loss as well. Do we have any other joys or concerns that we'd like to lift? Karen. <laughs> congratulations to all the graduates that we have this year um, as well and we're, we're glad that it was a beautiful experience any other joys or concerns this morning Susie oh. is there a birthday too I'm guessing that must be Karen <laughs> uh, happy birthday, Karen. Any other joys or concerns this week? Uh, Sandy. Carla Metric is, is still not doing well and, and uh, is unable to walk right now and 
Um, so if you can give her a call or stop by, she'd appreciate that. Any others? Let's continue this morning with the word of prayer. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to come together and worship you. We ask that as we congregate together, Lord, that you will fill our hearts, fill this spirit, fill your spirit in this place, Lord. We pray that you will guide us, that you will lead us, that you will strengthen us, and that you will make a path for us as we go throughout our week. Lord, we ask your blessing upon this service and upon, upon all those who are here worshiping this morning. In your name we pray, amen. amen. The call to worship this morning is taken from Psalm 138, verses 1 and 2. I give thanks, O Lord, with all my heart. I will sing your praises before the gods. I bow before your holy temple as I worship. I praise your name for your unfailing love and faithfulness, for your promises are backed by all the honor of your name. Please stand now and join with us as we sing our praise song this morning. God is reaching out to us through his steadfast love for each of us. As we pray our prayer of confession this morning, renew your commitment to his ways. Together, let us say the prayer of confession. Holy God, thank you for sending Jesus to save us from eternal separation from you. Thank you for being our guide and sustainer when the times are hard for us to manage. Please forgive our weakness and unwillingness to follow. Bless us today as we worship you and renew a right spirit within, within us. us. Amen. Amen. My one defense my righteousness. Oh God, how I need you. Friends, I declare to you today, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Friends, believe the good news of our Lord Christ Jesus. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Congratulations. That is really awesome. To be a drum major, it's a major thing. <laughs> Just saying. Just saying. Turn around and shake hands with three or four people if you want to. Rub elbows. When we talk about rubbing elbows, we really mean it, don't we? Take your time, gang.
we question ourselves. These cards oh. for the teachers, just real quick, because they're here. Yeah, is that all right? Yeah, I don't Just care. super quick. Okay, thank you for coming. You're dismissed. No. <laughs> uh, oh, Megan has, has run out for a minute. Connie, would you come forward? A few weeks ago, we, uh, we recognized our teachers, and uh, they have been... Uh, can Here she comes, <laughs> and you can bring... Yes, Morgan is with her. Come on, sweetheart. Oh, that is such a cute dress. <laughs> but we, uh, we wanted to recognize um, Connie, Megan, and I have Katie's okay. here too that you can give to her. Okay. But we wanted to recognize them. Our teachers, uh, during this past year, uh, when uh, Session and all of us decided, worship folks, decided we would go with the 10 o'clock uh, service, they sacrificed their 10 o'clock service. They really did. And... Uh, we just appreciate that very, very much. With Sunday school going on the same time as worship, it was just huge. So we just want to thank you and show our appreciation. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Give me five, kiddo. Oh, you can't. You're full of. You're full of. What are those? Pretty my my ponies, my little ponies. Thank you. Thanks, guys. We appreciate you. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning, let us say together the prayer of illumination. Open our eyes, Lord, for we need to see you. We desire to follow your ways as we listen to your word this morning. Open our minds to your truth. Amen. Our psalm this morning for our scripture lesson is taken from Psalm 130. This is a song for pilgrims ascending to Jerusalem. From the depths of despair, O Lord, I call for your help. Hear my cry, O Lord, pay attention to my prayer. Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who, O Lord, could ever survive? But you offer forgiveness that we might learn to fear you. I am counting on the Lord. Yes, I am counting on him. I have put my hope in his word. I long for the Lord more than centuries long for the dawn. Yes, more than centuries long for the dawn. O oh, Israel, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is unfailing love. His redemption overflows. He himself will redeem Israel from every kind of sin. The word of God for the people of God. Lord, we are listening. Amen. Thank you, Michael. Not a wonderful scripture, gang? Isn't it? How appropriate for our lives. This uh, is a very important psalm, um, and I'll just, I'll just get right to it. A very important psalm for a very important reason. When uh, people made pilgrimages to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem, as you, you may or may not know, is on a high hill, a uh, very important hill. Uh, tradition would say that it is the hill or the mountainside where uh, Abraham and Isaac, Abraham took him up to, to sacrifice him. And of course, the Islamic folks uh, believe that it was not Isaac that Abraham took up there, but it was Ishmael that he took up there to sacrifice. And so, hence the reason why Jerusalem, and especially the, uh, uh, the Temple Mount there, is so important to them because the temple mount they believe is traditionally where all that happened and so you know the the islamic folks say wait a minute or the arab folks say wait a minute you know the arabs say that's that's as holy to us as it is to you because abraham took ishmael up there but as christians or as jews they believe it was isaac so they would make pilgrimages. Uh, Jewish folks would make pilgrimages to Jerusalem. And this is called a psalm of ascent because as they walked up the hill, as they walked up the mountain, small mountain, uh, into, into Jerusalem to, to worship God and to be together, as they walked, they would, they would sing these hymns. They would sing 
this kind of uh, psalm. They would sing this psalm among many others. But if you see psalm of ascent, that's what that means. It means a, a psalm that was, that was read, a psalm that was sung even as they walked up the hill toward Jerusalem. Very important psalm. It's important for a number of reasons because the Jews had been through quite a few problems, as we know. Uh, and it's important because it talks about these long nights or these dark nights that they would experience where God was seemingly so far away. But the beauty of this, too, is, you know, just, just how appropriate it is for our lives. Huh? Talking with Don and Christy this week and being together with them. The last year has been very hard on them. Uh, culminating really in, in the, the last few weeks there of, of Don's life and how difficult all of that was. Yeah, dark days. We, we experience them here. Dark, dark days. Dark days. But it ends so wonderfully and so beautiful. And that's what we want to talk about today. I, uh, we were given, again, this psalm through the, uh, through the lectionary, and, and we want to spend time talking about it today. Long nights and beautiful sunrises. Uh, let's share as we, as we talk about this. Hopefully. Oh, there we go. I'm going to talk about these dark nights. Uh, these are pictures that I took, by the way. Not that I'm an amazing photographer, but thank goodness for iPhones, huh? They take, they take good pictures. Let's talk about these dark nights for a while. Hey, we all experience them. Uh, the beginning of this sermon really is, and the beginning of this psalm is a very heavy, heavy feeling. Uh, in Hebrew, it's called kavod, the kavod of God, the, the heavy presence of God, the kavod of God. And that's what the people were experiencing when they, when they talked about the dark nights that they had gone through. Let's talk about this for just a moment, if we can. Not working. There we go. Let's talk about these dark nights, verses 1 through 4. Now, now I'm going to read them again, and, um, and I, I will read them actually from the, uh, the English Standard Version, but I, I think they're important that we, we kind of get a glimpse into what David is saying here in this psalm. Whenever I do this, think about my mom. She always used to do that. Remember how COVID first broke out and they said, never touch your face, never touch your tongue. And the woman that was giving the presentation of don't touch your face or don't touch your tongue was doing this. And <laughs> Oh, well. Here's what it says. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. I love that. You know why? Because it's specific. Okay? I don't just want to, they don't just want to say, David just doesn't want to say, well, okay, God, listen to me. He says, here's how I want you to listen. I want your ears to be attentive to my voice. In other words, I really want your attention. Really good. If you, O Lord, should mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. Times of separation from God. Times of separation from God. Now, I will tell you technically that there really are no times of separation from God. In other words, God will never separate himself from you ever. But it seems like God is far away. 
That's kind of how I look at that, you know. It just seems like God is just far away. It feels like God is not listening. Have you ever been there? Yep. I have my, uh, I have my place that I go for prayer over at, uh, over at Marine. I have this, this spot. It's a common spot, and sometimes there's people up there, so I can't go, and I have to find another spot, which is frustrating. But, you know, don't people know that that's my spot? Get out of my spot. <laughs> Come on, get away from my spot. But I go there, and there are times when, when I've said to God, I don't think you're listening. Like, I didn't feel like you're really listening. Now, husbands, you're aware of times like this. Come on. Where your wife looks at you and says, you're not listening, are you? And we lie and say, of course we're listening. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's just, just kind of giving you the clue, ladies, that that's how it works. But there are times, I really, when I've gone to God and I said, I, I really don't think you're listening. Now, I know you're listening academically here, but I don't think you're listening here. Times of separation from God, you know? Weird. Times of remembering our sins. David talks about that too in verse, uh, verses 3 and 4. Talks about that. If you, O Lord, should uh, mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? If you should talk about our sins, who could stand? Times whenever we look back on how we think we've disappointed God. I do that all the time. All the time. Where I say, God, I know I'm disappointed with you. And academically, he's, I know he's not. Because God understands me. He knows when I mess up and he knows when I do dumb things. But academically, I feel, but in here, I feel like I've disappointed him. Anybody feel that way ever? Yeah. Thank you. But sometimes, you know, it's like a plain affect. But I know you hear what I'm saying. I think you do. But knowing and remembering God's great love and mercy, and this is what David does. This is kind of what turns, turns the tide, really, in this psalm, if you will. It turns the tide, for it says... But with you there is forgiveness. With you there is forgiveness that you may be feared. I love, um, I love how, uh, how David put it and, and in the, uh, the living translation. I'm counting on the Lord. Yes, I'm counting on him. Oh, verse 3. Lord, if you kept a record of our sins, who, O oh Lord, could ever survive? What does the scripture say? The same numbers, one, three, and zero, but turn the three and the zero around. Psalm 103 says, as far as the east is from the west, so far he removes our transgressions from us. As a father loves his children, so the Lord loves those who fear him, for he knows how we are made. He remembers that we are dust. Uh, like a loving parent, who forgives the sins of their children. He forgives us. I assure you today that He will forgive you for your sin. Whether you're sitting in here, whether you're listening on the radio station outside, or if you're watching us today, I'm telling you, He will forgive your sin. Not sometimes, not once in a while, not when he feels like it. Actually, it is when he feels like it. Because it's every single time you come to him. He said, you, O Lord, you don't remember our sins. Wow. That's awesome. All right. Kavod. Let's rise. Let's raise the kavod here. Talk about beautiful sun. I took this picture too. Yep. I took that picture. My kids always say, Dad, how come you get up so early in the morning on vacation? 
because of that. That's why it's even better back there. Yeah. We almost had another catastrophe this morning. Tried to turn this on and it wasn't working again. Lovely. Lovely. It's always fun, first thing on Sunday morning, climbing a ladder to try to get this thing to work. But yeah, beautiful sunrises. Beautiful sun. I love sunrises. Dad, how come you get up at 5.30 in the morning? Well, I can't help it, number one. My body just goes, you're awake now. Okay. But, uh, but this is how David ends this psalm. I just love it. He talks about uh, our trust in God. It starts with placing our trust in in God. And I love that. I love that. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchmen in the morning. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. I am counting on the Lord. Yes, I am counting on him. I have put my hope in him for I long for the Lord more than centuries, centuries long for the dawn. Yes, more than centuries long before the dawn i'm counting on the lord i have put my hope in him no matter what you may feel and i and i gotta tell you no matter what you may feel place your trust in him you see the thing is we uh <clears throat> we have these prayers that we bring before God and we have these requests that we bring before God and we pray about them and we pray about them and we pray about them and we pray about them. I have things that I've prayed, how old am I? 59. Well, that's even bad whenever you have to, you can't remember how old you are. What? Huh? <laughs> it gets worse? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It does. But, uh, you know... I, it's, it's unbelievable to me, it's unbelievable to me that, uh, you know, I, I just don't, I don't place my trust in him because I feel like he's separated from me. Folks, he's not separated. He's there. And you can place your trust in him. I've, all these years I've been praying about things, and, and I've been praying personally. I'll just be a little transparent here this morning. There are some things in me that I really want God to change. And I have been praying about those things for at least 30 years. What? You know, God, are you not listening? Hello. But see, David kept his faith and his trust in God in the worst of times in his life. Understand how bad it got for David, right? King Saul chased him with his army, pursued him to kill him because he was jealous. And David ran into the mountains and uh, hid in the caves and, and hid in the hills. Whew. And we think we got it bad, you know. David trusted in God. You, you, you know, you read those psalms when he was uh, running away when he was fearing his for his life you read those psalms and he says lord i i know you're there i know you hear me but a lot of those psalms start like this you know god where are you at not feeling you nearby and yet he is there placing your trust in god no matter and remember that the sun comes up tomorrow the sun will always rise. Always. No matter how bad your situation might be, the sun will always rise. Always. We get myopic. See, we, we, get, this, uh, we get this myopic thing going on where we only see just the moment and we, we can't somehow go beyond this bad moment that's happening in our lives. Oh, this moment is the worst, and, and my life is going to be terrible from here on out. It certainly can be. It'll change. But you see, it's, it's beyond that. I, I remember, I, boy, I, I can't remember who, uh, who preached this sermon. 
Elmer Towns maybe, who was talking about when he was a little boy. And he's, I think Elmer Towns is, is gone now, but he said the circus would come to town. And they had the parade for the circus coming into town. You know, all the animals would go by, uh, not just wild running around, but in cages. And we, went to, uh, we went to Keystone, and we went to uh, Living Treasures. Took the whole family there the other day. The place is great. I've been up here all this time, and I've never been. That place is awesome. But he would talk about, the, uh, he would talk about this, uh, this parade, the circus coming into town. And, and he was a short little guy, and his brother was a little taller. And he said, we'd go up to this fence. And I tried to look through the fence, but I was too short. So my brother would look through this little hole in the fence, and he would say, okay, uh, okay, looks like the elephants are coming now. And then he would get up on this stone, and he would look, and he could see what was going on and then he would say all right now the lions are coming he could see the lions going and he would he would get up and see but see that's how we see things we can only see like right right what's in front of us right now right we only see like today god sees the whole thing he sees the whole thing he knows how it's going to turn out and it's always turning out for the good because the sun always rises it always does the shamar are the, is the word, the, the Hebrew, that talks about the sentries who are, uh, who are keeping watch over the city. Anybody in the military here this morning that was ever had to do that, stand guard? Yeah, not fun, especially during the night. I used to talk to my uncle about that, you know. My uncle was in World War II, and he would have to stand guard, and oh, he hated that. And he would wait for the morning, you know. Long nights. Do you ever have those long nights? Or you, you can't sleep? That's another thing, kids, by the way of getting old. Sometimes your body just says, I don't think I'm going to sleep tonight. <laughs> am I, come on, am I right? And you lay there and you roll around and you're like, oh, man. Long nights. Centuries watching, standing guard. Long nights. They long for the dawn when it can finally be over. Beautiful sun rises because the sun always comes up. You know, it's interesting, and I've talked about this in the past, uh, at the, when we, they talk about creation, it's always interesting in uh, Genesis, the beginning of Genesis there where uh, Moses is, is uh, relaying the story of creation as God gave it to him. And, and it always says at the end of the first day, and there was evening and there was morning the first day. And the second day, and there was evening and there was morning the first day. And the third day, there was evening and there was morning. You know what that tells me? God's day never ends at night. It always ends in the morning. Isn't that cool? How do we know that? Look what the scripture says about it. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 23. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh each morning. So your problem is not going to end in the dark. Your sorrow, your difficulty is not going to end in the dark. It's going to end in the morning. Listen to Psalm chapter 30 and verse 5. For his anger lasts only a moment, but his favor lasts a lifetime. Weeping may last through the night, but joy comes in the morning. <laughs> oh, man. And some of us, and because of the things of life, uh, it seems like it goes on and on and on but I'm telling you joy comes in the morning yeah there are times of separation where we feel like God is separated from us there are times when we just remember our sins and the, the problems go on and on and on and on but I'm here to tell you 
that God's day ends in the morning, not at night. Okay? Will you remember that? Okay? Let's have a smile. Thank you. Just making sure we're still connected. I used to preach teaching. I used to teach preaching, that is. I used to teach preaching. And, uh, you know, we'd go through all these different ways that you can preach, different styles of preaching, uh, different stories you can tell or whatever you want. And uh, the students would say, eventually, what do, you, what do you think is the best way to preach? And I'd say, I don't care. Just connect. Connect. You know, don't, uh, don't take the word and be high and lofty. Well, you know, if, if we dissect this theologically, nobody cares. They want the scripture to talk to us, right? And the, that scripture, Psalm 130, talks to me. Straight talk to me. It's good stuff. Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for what it means. We thank you for the great blessing of walking with you day to day. And Lord, you know what's so great about it is that you prove your word to be true. Every moment of every day. As we receive communion, Lord, this morning, and as we, we share together in the cup and in the bread, we pause for just a moment to get, put our trust in you. We pause for just a moment to uh, remember, Lord, that your day does not end at night. It ends in the morning. Yeah, that we'll, we'll be honest with you, Heavenly Father, we will. We'll tell you that uh, life is hard sometimes. And sometimes we just wish all of our problems would just float away. But that's not the reality of it most of the time. So, Father, help us to remember that. You know, help us to remember what David was talking about today. Help us to remember that. And as we share in communion this morning, Lord, may our hearts truly be touched by your presence. May our bodies, Lord, be nourished and our spirits be nourished and lifted to a higher plane as we celebrate this very important time together. Be with us, Lord, we pray in thy name. Jesus said, come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Jesus also said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We give our thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us pray. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, eternal God. For you are the creator and ruler of the universe. You are our God and we are the creatures of your hand. You made us from the dust of the earth, breathed into us the very breath of life and set us in your world to love and to serve you. When we, when we rejected your love and ignored your wisdom, you did not reject us. You loved us still and called us to turn again to you in obedience and in love. Therefore, Lord, we praise you, joining our voices with the heavenly choirs and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Sing with me. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord. Holy 
the Father, holy is the Son, holy is the Spirit, blessed three in one. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord. Out of your great love for the world, you sent Jesus among us to set us free from the tyranny of evil. He lived as one of us, sharing our joys and sorrows. By his dying and rising, he released us from the bondage of sin and frees us from the dominion of death. In union, with Christ's suffering for us, we live out the mystery of faith that we proclaim. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. Spirit of the living God, make us one as we partake of these your gifts to us so that we might be in communion with you and with one another. As we break bread together in this place, may our eyes be opened to see your glory. As we lift the cup of salvation, may we be strengthened to follow your way. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor and praise are yours, almighty God, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The scriptures tell us that Jesus, on the night before he was taken from his disciples, did take the bread, and he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, and he said to them, this is my body, broken for you to preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. As often as you eat this bread together, be reminded of what I've done for you, and be thankful. Let us share together the emblem of the body of Christ. The scriptures also tell us that Jesus, after he had given them the bread, he did take the cup and he blessed it and he passed it to his disciples saying, this is the new covenant of my blood, shed for you, give you eternal life, to preserve you blameless unto everlasting life. As often as you drink this together, be reminded of what I've done for you, and be thankful. Let us share together the cup of Christ. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, you are the creator of all things. You formed all things simply by your word, by speaking them into being. We stand before you, Lord, amazed that that very God who created all things would be the God who would come and live with us and walk with us and commune with us every day, who loved us enough to send us your own son to die for us on a cross on Calvary so that we could be blameless before you. We confess to you, Lord, that we are not blameless. We are not. For in word, thought, and deed, every day, Lord, we, we just do things you are not pleased of. But Father, we know that through it all, your love and your grace and your mercy is active among us. You forgive us. You are on our side in the middle of the darkest nights that we can know. Pray, Lord, today for 
those who cannot be with us today for Carla Metric, Lord. Just be with her. It's been a long few months that she's been dealing with this. We ask, Lord, your blessing upon her today. We pray, Lord, for my kids and for his family and what they've been experiencing in these last months. And it continues on as they have to deal with everything concerning his brother. Be with them. Be with the Nagy family, Lord, as they, as they have to this week walk through. Be with Don and, and Christy and Sierra and, and watch over them, Lord, this week. It's going to be a long day on Tuesday for sure. But Father, we put our trust and our hope in you alone. Be with the Hoover family, Lord, and with Marty today as this week they have to say goodbye to his brother. Ask, Lord, your blessing upon them. You know, the fact is, Lord, we do a, a pretty decent job at kind of covering, off all, covering up all of the things that, uh, that we're hurting about. We, we do a good job with that. But you see it all. You see it all. And yet you love us and you give yourself to us. But Lord, for all, all of our prayers and supplications that we bring before you, together now in this place, as your people, we pray the prayer that your son Jesus has taught us to pray. Praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand as we sing together our last song.
I didn't take that picture. <laughs> the one with the mountains? I would like to be there and take that picture. It would be nice to do a little hunting out in Colorado, right? I'm going to go with Ken and Ken Lachlan, and then one of these days I'm just going to stick myself in the trailer where nobody sees in the bathroom of the trailer, and they're driving out there, and I'll open the thing when we get there. Surprise! <laughs> hey, are you struggling with stuff? Yeah. And maybe the question is, too, are you tired of struggling with, struff, with stuff? Yeah. And you feel like God's, like, somewhere way out there, not really hearing you? Yeah. Aaron, the sun rises, man. Mike, the sun rises. It does. Christy, the sun rises. It does. And we know this up here, but we don't put it down here. We need to put it down here. And that's why I say to you every week, live like you believe it. Okay? Now may the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest upon you. As you walk with Him, may you know His eternal presence. May the very presence of God Himself fill you. The love of Christ enfold you, and the presence of the Holy Spirit guide you in these days. Amen and amen. Thanks for coming, folks.